Hello and welcome to All Irish Sport. I am delighted to be joined by the Redman TV's Chris Pajak and we're going to be talking talking all things Irish Liverpool related and um, I suppose we'll start off with last night. Chris, um, well first I suppose, good morning, how are you? Oh good mate, yeah, really, really, uh, really good after last night's win and stuff mate, it was, uh, it was absolutely brilliant again. Yeah, you, you you're missing a lot of players, and that's probably something we're going to talk about. Um, but you, were you impressed? I know Chiodozi Ogbeni opened the scoring for for Luton, and he does seem to play quite well against you guys. Have you been impressed by him this this season at all? No, hate him. He's annoying me. Um, no, I'm kidding. He's, he's he's clearly a good player and stuff. Obviously, he's, he's on his toes for the finish, isn't he? Um, you know, unfortunately, it comes off Kelleher, bounces at a bit of a mad angle to him and stuff. But yeah, he's a, he's a decent little player. In fact, I thought. Luton did particularly well in the first half and he was part of that press, wasn't he? That really sort of pinned Liverpool back in and was able to really stop our build-up play and stuff. And, you know, I felt like um, Luton last night went sort of man-to-man and that's very, very difficult to do. Obviously, Leeds, Leeds United did that when they came up under Marco Bielsa and stuff and they just made it incredibly difficult and suffocating for Liverpool and he was part of that and you can clearly see that he's a good little player. Yeah, I mean, they did well to hold on for as long as they did up until the second half. Um, the Liverpool were just ultimately too strong. Once he's got the first goal, it was uh, curtains after that, I think. Um, but I, I suppose I, the reason I contacted you was I did a feature with Paul off, off your channel before um, about Queevee and Kelleher, and it was a, a similar situation. I think that was before COVID. I think that might have been 2019. And it was just a kind of... A look at Quevey and Keller. He was kind of coming in. He was playing cup games. He, I think, it was third choice to Adrian actually at the time, uh, and obviously Alison Becker. But looking at him now, he's twenty five now. He's coming in. He's second choice. I think Liverpool fans were frustrated with him before Christmas, um, and now they're kind of they're back on side with him. But how do you feel about him? And the fact is now Alison Becker's out for the next while. Um, would you have trust in Kelleher to, I suppose, be the man to lead the way? And you know, he's gone for the league now. It looks like he's are definitely in the tight race. So, is he good enough? A and and what are your kind of thoughts on him? And what's the general consensus over in Merseyside? I think he's spot on about earlier on in the season, Paul. To be honest with you, I think you know he's he's come off the back of a good couple of cup runs. Um, over the last few years, obviously he scores the winning penalty in in a, in a cup final, which is wild, isn't it? And, um, I thought in those seasons he was absolutely exceptional coming in from the bench. This season, early doors certainly in a, you know the early rounds of the Carabao, we saw him in the Europa League at, at times as well. Less impressive, to be honest with you. Um, I just felt like he wasn't making saves, um, and I, you know I think listen, there's a big difference between Alison Becker and a number two goalkeeper. Of course, there is. Alisson's one of the top three, if not the best, I think the best goalkeeper in the world. Um, probably along with Courtois or something like that, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. For me, those two are the, the, the clear lead in the way. Um, there's a drop-off, certainly, between Alisson and Quivine, and the shot stopping wasn't ever it. Like The, the one-on-ones, Alisson's too clear, and I think his ability on the ball is a little bit better than Quivine's as well, although that never really showcased itself in those early first few seasons with us. But since since you know the turn of the year, maybe 2024, we've been stepped up big time. And you know, you're starting to see big one-on-one saves, big one-handed saves. We saw it at the weekend, we saw it last night. And he's starting to save us points. And that's the difference, is you know, Alison Becker saves his points, a good goalkeeper saves your points, and Cleveland Kelleher is now starting to save Liverpool points, and that's why everyone's back on side with him, because he's up this game. You know, he, he's definitely playing better, and, you know, it's obviously difficult for a goalkeeper who, who sits on the sidelines for most of the time. He doesn't play for the unders or anything like that. It is just training and the occasional game, but you can see as he's getting more and more games now, he's getting stronger and stronger, and his performances are getting better and better. He's getting more and more comfortable. I think he struggled a little bit last night, you know, um, with clearing the ball, you know, but then I don't think that's his fault. I think that was down to the defenders and the midfielders and what Luton were doing to us, forcing him to go long. No goalkeeper's going to complete 10 out of 10, you know, balls to the halfway line. It just doesn't happen. So I think the crowd was getting a little bit antsy and see yesterday with him, but I don't think that's his fault at all. And I do think that his performances have merited the starting job. And I do think that he's a, 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 like, He's got the potential to be a world-class goalkeeper. Unfortunately for him, I'm not sure whether he fulfills that potential at the Liverpool Football Club because 
to become world class, you need that consistency. You need that game time. You need to be able to play week in, week out. And if he was doing that, I would. I, I'm convinced that he'd be a top goalkeeper. Um, I'm convinced now that he can play for any Premier League side, pretty much. Um, he's he's the, he's he's that good. Maybe it's not like a top four side. Maybe at the moment, in terms of you know being the number one goalkeeper, but anywhere from five down. I'd see him as an absolute brilliant buy for anybody. I could see him going abroad if that's what he wants to do and performing in any of the other top European leagues and stuff. So he's got a really high ceiling. And the question for him is, can he achieve that at Liverpool? And is he happy being a number two for Alisson? Because unless Alisson gets injured, he's not getting in the side apart from the cup runs. And you never know with the Egan Klopp leaving next year. We even might not get the cup run. It might just be one of them where the other manager doesn't think like that, doesn't want to develop breathing, doesn't want to get, see him get better and better. But Alisson's got a few years left in him now, so it wouldn't surprise me. We've heard rumblings of this that Kelleher wants to move on. I like that. I'm excited about seeing what he can do because he's been a good servant too. He's been a good performer. He's he's sat and he's waited and, and he's been patient. But there is a point in every young man's career where they want to go on and be the best that they can be. And, that means that we signed the right player in the first place. Because if he's there to sit there and pick up a pay packet and not play football for the rest of his career, then he was never good enough to be a number one in my eyes. Yeah, I think that's that's the criticism, I suppose, from Irish fans, is that the fact that you look at young Gavin Bazoon, who, who's come over, he left Manchester City and he sought to play first-team football, play, had a couple of loans uh, with Portsmouth and Rochdale and now got signed by Southampton and he, you know, he took a little bit of criticism but now Southampton have him as a number one and he's making all sorts of uh, clean sheets this season and he's probably now he is the, the Ireland number one at the moment because Kelleher is just not playing at club level that's not to say that Kelleher is worse than him or Kelleher is better than him but it's just the fact that as you say nobody's really seen what Cuevin could do because he's never had a real run of games like you, you couldn't kind of say he's played 10 games in a row to kind of really see what he's like um, it's always kind of just if, if Alisson's injured or a cup run as you say is um, I think you know there was bids rejected I think it was Brentford in January um, and I think maybe in the summer as well there were some bids and I think that was a criticism from Irish fans it's like Liverpool wouldn't let him go but Klopp obviously really likes him at the same time and didn't have a replacement to see, see him go and I think maybe that's actually in a sense been a bit of a blessing in disguise because you see now the form he's kind of coming into at the moment he probably is putting himself in a shop window and if Liverpool can finish the season very strongly or win the league or anything like that he, you know his his value will be, you know, right right at the very top that it can be. Yeah, it will be. And listen, I think it's sometimes it's easy to sort of lump a goalkeeper in with an outfield player, a 25-year-old field player who's doing the same. You probably would question, you know, the motives. Um, and I can understand the frustration from Irish fans because they want the best version of their goalkeeper to be playing for their country. Of course they do. You know, you're a proud nation who, who love your sport uh, right up there with any country in the world and stuff. So... I can understand that frustration, but I, I do think there's a pragmatism and a patience to tell her that this might be the way for him to become the best player that he can be. You know, he, he could move, he could have moved two years ago, not just last season. And, you know, he might have struggled. And I think sometimes in football, Paul, and, and you'll know this just as well as anybody, it's not always about just moving. It's about the right football club with the right manager at the right time. And Keller looks to be a guy who's taking these things into consideration. You know, sitting behind Alisson Beckett, he might become a better keeper for having those four or five years behind Alisson and seeing the way that he trains week in, week out and the dedication that he's got and working under our goalkeeper coach, John Ackerberg, who's extremely well thought of uh, in the industry and stuff. Like This might be his route to maybe how he becomes the best player that he can be and it might not be everybody's preferred route. But ultimately, if he gets there in the end, and he's he's still got at least ten years of his career left, I would argue he's not going to hit his prime for another one or two years anyway. So there's no reason to rush it, is there? I suppose from his point of view, although you can tell equally that he is getting antsy because he's probably been doing this for fifteen years now, and he wants to be a starting goalkeeper again. Yeah, I think I think he's you know looking at it. A lot of the time at the start, people were kind of looking at it going, right, I think we want to get, people wanted to get him out of Liverpool just to see what he could do. But if he's going to get a run at games at Liverpool now and the way things have turned out, 
it might not be the worst thing in the world. Now, Liverpool fans might not, you know, think, oh, he's as good as Alisson or anything like that. But as you said, he's producing big saves. He's, he's winning points for you. Um, as you say, um, you know, he looks like he's really starting to kind of come of age now. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, it's it's difficult, isn't it, for any young goalkeeper? I think it's probably one of the most difficult positions to come into, really, especially at a club like Liverpool. Um, because the eyes of everybody are on you at all times. And maybe he did just struggle with that to begin with, but his performances are getting better week in, week out. And that's all you can ask for, really, is that he's feeling more confident. You know, and let's not forget as well that the team's changing around him every single week. You know, it's Joe Gomez, it's Andy Robertson, it's Trent Alexander-Arnold, it's Conor Bradley, it's Kwanzaa last night, it's Canate, it's Van Dijk. You know, this is a difficult thing, isn't it? And they're part of that defensive unit. And, And again... Because he's not quite the same player as Alisson and maybe not as dominant and, and, and not as quick off his line as an Alisson Becker, that actually changes your build-up, which becomes more difficult for the players in front of him and all that type of stuff. So there's a period of adaptation and I think he's come through that now. And Listen, I want Alisson Becker back in, in the sticks. I really do, of course I do, because he gives Liverpool the best chance of winning uh, each and every single week. But as far as number two goalkeepers, there ain't many better in world football, I don't see than than, than Creevy and Kelleher. And, you know, you can have, there's always that eternal battle, isn't there? If you have a really old goalkeeper to back up your player or or a young guy. And we've tried the old goalkeepers and it's been crap, to be quite honest with you, Paul. And and having someone there who's continuing to get better, who surprises you with performances week in, week out, is is the way to go. And it'll be a shame if he were to leave Liverpool, but he'd, he'd have our blessing at the same time as well, because... It's a good thing that he wants to move on if he does. Yeah, well, I think he's been a good servant regardless. You know, you, you mentioned the, the the cup final and he scored scored the penalty as well against Chelsea. Um, he's prob yeah, he will be in goal, I imagine, this this uh, week for the Carabao Cup final. How do you see that one going? Well, the last three finals against them have gone to penalties because I think you know, obviously, we we did the cup double over them a couple of years ago, Carabao and FA Cup. We beat them in the Super Cup. I remember going to that game as well over in Turkey, I think it was, and that one went to penalties. So, on past form, it should be going to penalties and Callagher should be having the opportunity to save us. But, um, or maybe even win it again. I do think Liverpool got under Chelsea's skin at Anfield. Now, the injuries are going to be a problem for us. I think we, I think we win the cup, just maybe a goal in it. But I'd like to think we can do it in 90 this time. I really hope so because I'm driving home after the game. It's a big old drive. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't Extra fancy that. pens will just make me later. Yeah, I wouldn't fancy that. Um, well, just obviously, uh, just to finish off, you've mentioned injuries and, and you know injuries have opened the door for, for Conor Bradley. It's one that Irish fans, are, are re- well, Republic of Ireland fans are really sad about the fact that nobody seemed to pick him up or notice him. Uh, he kind of fell through the system. Um, and Northern Ireland picked him up and capped him from a very young age. Uh, he seems to be. I was even watching him last night. I was surprised he got taken off against Luton because he did really look like you know he was taking. Getting rested, him. Paul. He's getting rested. That's how big. That's how, that's how brilliant he's been. Okay, well, t- tell me about him. Kind of, you know, how how much has he surprised you since he's came into the team? And you know, what's what's your kind of expectation for him? I don't want to get ahead of myself, like, but he's 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 maybe the second best fullback in the world at the moment. Um, no, I'm, I'm Joe. He's brilliant, mate. He is absolutely superb, pal. Um, he's playing with this desire and sort of hunger and anger and skill set that, like, it's few and far between. Like, I mean, Trent's brilliant. Like, obviously, I don't need to tell anyone how good Trent Alexander Arnold is. Conor Bradley's coming in and playing at a completely different way. Like, getting up the field, up and down, you know, like a real. Attacking fullback, uh, um, almost like in some ways a bit like Gareth Bale when he was breaking through. You know what I mean? The way it's like, all right, lads, like, you've got a winger here. Never mind a fullback type of thing. And yet defensively, he's so good as well. Like he's absolutely like honestly, and he, he pop up in the middle of the in the middle of the pitch, and you just go an amazing run like he's Stephen Gerrard or something. He, like he looks so comfortable wherever he is on the football field. He's a player. He's technical. He's got desire. He's got the hunt. He, like hunts goals. out, he hunts assists. out. he's brilliant defensively. Nothing's too much. He never shakes responsibility. He's just like you can't sing his praises enough. He's 
and he's dealt with adversity this season as well. Obviously, unfortunately, the, you know he's had to deal with the, the sad passing of his father recently and stuff. And you know, a lot of people know how difficult that can be. Uh, and to see him come back into the side and you know just continue where he left off, yeah, it's obviously bad for Trent Alexander Arnold. But the blow's been softened massively by the performances of Conor Bradley. And you know, um, I heard a few people are starting to call him the Tyrone Cyclone, which is a quite nice thing. Yeah, to be honest with you, when I first kind of saw him, he reminded me of a young Seamus Coleman. Just to kind of, it's just he seems a bit more Who's technical. That? Seamus Coleman. Who's that? Everton and Ireland. <laughs> I'm kidding, mate. Come on, he's uh, been there forever. I think yeah. he was one of the dogs of war. What he Seamus Coleman? He's been there that <laughs> yeah. long. Oh, yeah. He's there with him right back for Barry Owen and <laughs> Bess Edwards and all them, mate. Yeah. Uh, well, that's what I mean. It's just the way. Like Seamus kind of came in with no airs or graces, he, he had to kind of come in and earn a spot. Um, I do think was he Bra- sixty grand. Yeah, was he forty or sixty grand? Sixty grand, yeah. Sixty. But I think as you know, you look at Bradley. I think Bradley's a more technical player than Seamus. But in terms of those mazy runs and you know, you said you know, grinding out goals, grinding out assists, he does in that way remind me a little bit of Seamus Coleman. He probably he, he may want to be better if he's playing obviously with better players and so on. But uh, that's who he kind of reminds me of coming through at the moment. If he has a career like Seamus Coleman, he'll have a very good career, won't he? At the end of the day, I mean, you don't stay at a Premier League club for, for so long um, and play such an integral part of of that, do you? Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I think he's better than him to be honest with you. But you know, it's Liverpool and Everton bias is a side for like. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, Chris. <laughs> Um, listen, I, I just want to say thanks very much for giving up your time this morning. Um, some really brilliant insight there on on those players, and I'm sure that the fans would be delighted to hear. It. Obviously, the progress of Quivine, and um, maybe not so much the progress of uh, of Connor Bradley, but uh, maybe Liverpool fans, obviously Irish Liverpool fans, would be happy to hear about that. Good luck on Sunday. Um, I'll try and keep this bias and, and not be hoping for a, a Chelsea win. But uh, no, best of luck and also safe travels. I know what you're thinking, mate. I know what you're thinking. Regardless, I bet you were thinking. <laughs> I hope you win last night, though. Yes. Yeah. You'll be a little. You'll never walk on a scarf on did you last night? No. When you were watching the match, mate. I, I. Well, look. What What happened was went really well because Ogbeni scored and they lost. So. Yeah. Can't ask for much better than that. And it was unfortunate. Yeah, bet- like, like Quivi made a big save as well, obviously. So you know that helped too. Um, I, he couldn't have done anything about the the goal. I mean, he prevented the, with the save, and then the rebounds, the rebound. It is what it is. But no, safe travels to you, uh, going to Wembley, um, there and back. So I hope you have a a good time there and enjoy. Yourself. Appreciate it, Paul. Thanks for inviting me on. Massive enjoyed it. Absolute pleasure, well, guys. Don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and check out Chris's Red Men, the Red Men TV, if you haven't already. Brilliant channel, uh, the biggest Liverpool fan channel, if I'm not mistaken. And they do fantastic work there. Um, content coming out all the time, and they've members stuff and so on. So sign up to that. And uh, yeah, if you want to plug it away there, Chris, if there's anything I'm missing, fire ahead. No, mate. No, obviously we just talk about Liverpool all day, mate. Um, and if you if that's your bag, then come and give us a try. And that's all we ask, really. If you enjoy it, please stick around and, and watch more videos. Any support's appreciated. But uh, yeah, thank you, Paul. Really appreciate being on uh, All Irish Sport. No problem. And they have merch as well. So if you want any merchandise, check them out. Thanks very much for watching, guys. <laughs> and uh, we'll uh, we'll speak to you all soon. Thanks for watching.